Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I am Matabani, and today we're going to do another fun session, um, which you already know about. Uh, so we're going to try and draw a fishbowl. Um, and it might sound a uh, fishbowl, but yeah, we, we, we will do it differently. We will try some cool tricks. Um, yeah, and then I, I think you, you will love to do them by yourself when you get um, time doing some other sketches. I'm sure you do lots and lots of drawing, um, especially now that we are in a lockdown. I'm sure you're doing lots of activities. Um, so these cool tricks will help you to enhance your future drawings um, and, uh, yeah, just build up on your creativity. I'll show you what I've got today. Um, and then we will get started. OK, so I'll move my camera towards all the materials I've got. So as you can see, I have got an A4 sheet of paper here. This is um, a watercolor paper. You can use any paper. I just use watercolor paper because I like the texture of it. Um, and then I have got. All right. So there we go. So I've got lots of text as, they use, as you can see. Um, uh, don't get overwhelmed. We won't be using so many textures. I just got everything. I don't know what I'm going to use. I might need something. So I got everything. Different tips. Some are thin. Some are thick. I've got a lot of Sharpies. I will definitely be using Sharpies, black Sharpies. If you don't have black Sharpies, you can use um black textures or black markers uh, or something close to black as well. Uh, you can work with whatever you have at home. So I've got all that stuff. I have also got some brushes here. Uh, you'll be like, oh, why are there brushes? Well, I might just do some tricks with brushes and textures and then some water. OK, in case um, if I want to add some texture to my drawing. So I've got that totally optional, um, but you can watch me and then you can try later on if you don't have these supplies handy right away. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. Lots of colorful textures. Um, yeah, whatever I have around the house, I pretty much just picked it up. Um, now. Um, pencils most important, and eraser. Um, and for uh, making it all a little bit easy for you guys, I also got um, a plate, just a plastic plate. Why? Because I'm going to draw a fishbowl with this. Just easy to draw a fishbowl. It's easy to get a round shape. If you have compass at home, you can use a compass. Um, I have a compass, but I just thought this is easy for you guys to understand. You might just go to the kitchen, ask your mom to get a plastic plate for you, and then you can just start off. And then I've also got a ruler. OK, um, let's get started. So those are all the supplies. Now, time to work. All right, so this is an A4 sheet of paper, and I'll just adjust it somewhere here. You can adjust it wherever you want. I'm just trying to adjust it in the middle of the page. And just draw around it. If you can draw a freehand circle, you can draw that as well. I'm drawing it like this. Oh, excuse this. me. Yes. Um. My mom and dad is away, so um, I don't know what to do. Um, do you have a piece of paper handy? Yes. Yep, that's fine. And do you have pencils and eraser? Um, yes. Great. OK, we are going to draw a fish bowl, a round fish bowl. Um, if you have a plate around, all good. Otherwise, you can just draw a circle, freehand circle. OK, all good. Great, all right. Now, um, so once you've drawn the circle here, we are going to cut it. 
Um, so I'm going to cut the bottom of the bowl because it has to be flat, otherwise it won't sit on a tabletop. So I'll just cut it like so. Can everyone see or is it too light? Maybe I'll just bring this closer. Mm, okay, that, that's better. Okay. That's better. <clears throat> okay, so um, so I just cut that um, bottom so it gives a flat base and I'm gonna cut the top as well. Just like that. And I will just erase those extra bits. And this bottom section as well. Okay. Now we'll make the opening for uh, the fish bowl or the fish. Yeah, it's a, it's basically a fish bowl. So there are two points, as you can see. One is here. One is here. How do you get a symmetry? How do you get the opening correct? So I'm drawing a line in the middle of this section. By middle, I mean whatever um, whatever looks right for you. You don't have to measure or anything. Just whatever looks right. Just, just for reference, we're going to erase this out later on. And then from here, I'm going to draw a curved line. You go up, up, up until you reach this section, and then you go down, down, down. Okay? And then you do the same for this part as well. And then, so that gives you a symmetrical opening to the fish jar or the fish bowl. Okay, now um, I will erase these extra sections, extra lines. And let's see how it looks like. Okay. And I'll erase some more lines here. Just bring it up here. Okay. Um, now, this, the bottom section that we had cut off. I will just make that section a little bit neat. Go ahead and make your jar um, neat and symmetrical before we start drawing rest of the things inside the jar. Okay, let me see if this section looks fine. Yep. Just erasing those dots that I made. Okay. That's about right. Now we will draw fish and rest of the things inside the bowl. Um, with water, if you have ever seen a fish bowl before, I'm sure you have, in a pet store or someone at someone's house, or maybe you have one at your own house, um, you'll see the water will be quite high up because more water is better environment for the fish. So we'll just water draw the water line somewhere here. A freehand wobbly line just to mimic the veins inside the little bowl. Now we're gonna draw 
the fishes. Now, how many fishes you want to add, it's entirely up to you. One, two, several, small, big, up to you. I'll do a combination and then you can go accordingly. So I'll, I'll add one here and I'm drawing, I'm not drawing one of those typical fishes. I'm sure you all know how to draw those fishes. Um, I'm, I'm drawing something a little bit different, okay? So these fishes that I'm drawing, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of this fish. Maybe some one 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 of you can prompt which what's the name is. Now these ones have thick bellies and it's got um, large fins, okay? F like flowy, large fins and tail. That's the head. So I'll make the head a little bit rounder. Okay. Um, now we will draw the tail. Like I said, flowy big tail. The head and the eyes. The fins. There's one little fin here and then I'm going to draw another one. Okay, so that completes one fish. We'll draw another one maybe facing this side. This is the head, the eyes. And I'll make that fin go behind the tail of the first fish. Just like so. And then another one here. Okay, so two, two big fish in the fish bowl. I might just add some small uh, blue fishes as well. Just the simple shapes. You all know how to do it. Um, so go nuts. How many you want to add, it's up to you. I love to make uh, the body of the fish uneven and wobbly. Um, so that's what I'm doing for all the fishes. And, and they, they're all different from each other. So I've drawn a small one there and I'll draw another small one 
here facing the same direction, which is my right. Just like so. And I think that's all I'll do with the fish with this size of a bowl. We don't want too many um, fishes. Now we'll draw um, uh, the, the bottom of the fish bowl. So just here, you would usually see there will be um, stones or a bit of sand. Um, so let's draw that. Maybe I can add a little bit of sand here, like a bed of sand, and then I can add some stones. So on, on my right hand side, I'm adding a bed of sand. On my left hand side, I'll draw some stones. Just make flat, round structures or shapes. and keep them tight, joined with one another. So it will give you a look that they're all piled up together. That's it. And then maybe I'll go over the bed of sand and add some more stones here. Okay. That's pretty much it. Now we will we will add um, some plants. So I'll draw one plant here, starting from my left. Just and I'll go behind this small fish. Not sure what the name of this plant is, but um, yeah, they're, they're probably artificial plants. And but I often see these sort of shapes in fish bowls, in pet stores. They look like the horns of a reindeer stacked on top of each other. Then another one just here, which will probably just have gone behind that fish. Okay, um, maybe I'll draw another one here. Another um, stack here. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, um, and then we will draw um, some more uh, plants. These are the simple ones that I'm sure you all have seen. They look like snakes, I would say. So two parallel lines going parallel, 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 and then you join at the tip. I'm drawing another one. Behind the one that I first drew. And then, um, Let's see, we can draw another one just here. Let's 
There you go. Okay. That finishes the fishbowl. Now we will start coloring. Before we start coloring, just make make um make the picture a bit tidy. Okay. Erasing extra lines. If there's a patch from the pencil, just erase it, make it neat. When you're using um, textures or markers, it's difficult to erase after you have applied the color. And textures or markers, they are translucent. They're not that opaque. So if it's patchy and if your drawing is dirty, it will still show even after you've applied the color. So make sure your drawing is neat and tidy before you start applying the color. Okay. Now that's the fishbowl. Now where is the fishbowl? It must, it's not floating. It must be on a tabletop. So let's just draw a tabletop. Simple. We'll go behind the fishbowl just here and draw a line. And if you want to measure it, you can just measure it on the other side as well. Make sure straight and parallel. And then, so imagine that's the table, okay? And that completes the fishbowl drawing. Let's start coloring, can't wait. Okay, now um, I will first be using, I'll show you all the colors that I will start using now. Let's see. Okay. So I am taking I'm taking two different kinds of blue. Okay. So I'm actually taking um yeah, two is about right. So I'm taking a light blue, okay? And this is, this is a deep blue, but it's, it's got a hint of green in it, okay? It's like a greenish blue. It's, it's got a little bit of green in it. If you have that color, that's fine. Otherwise you can take any dark blue and light blue. All right. I will first finish the water, then I will do the fish. There's a reason for that. You'll find out. So with the water, um, I don't want to color everything because the water is not opaque. I will color certain parts of it. Okay, so let's first trace the water line. Like so. And then you can also trace, if you want, you can also trace the bowl. And this I'm doing freehand. If it's difficult for you to do freehand, you can use the plate. And then the base.
Okay, now I'll start applying some color here and there. Not too much, I'm just applying simple strokes from right to left or left to right. And I will apply some of this uh, greenish blue that I picked up as well. My lines are parallel to the bottom of the page. No crisscross, okay? Okay, let's see. So that's all I've added. Now, I'll take a brush and some water. And I'm just going over those sections and diffusing the texture marks that I created. And it gives you a water effect and looks, I feel, looks much better than a plain and simple application of texture. See, it all diluted. Now it's become paint. Do your best when you're going to those inside sections. Oops. You can always fix up a little bit here and there, so don't worry. And I'm also running my brush over the edge of the fishbowl. You know, these lines that we drew, we traced with the blue. I'm also going over that to create that diffuse look. And when you are doing this sort of a application, it's important to know that you must do it as soon as you apply the color, as in the texture. If you leave it too long and try to do it later on, it will dry up a fair bit. It will still dilute, but it will dial up a, uh, dry up a fair bit and it will be hard for you. So you'll be like, ah, oh, I'm adding so much water, but nothing's coming out. And you might just end up wetting the paper so much that you can't draw on it anymore.
Um, so I haven't. I don't have a. Um, excuse me. Yes. Um, I don't have any paintbrush. That's okay. Uh, do you have textures handy? Um, yeah, that's fine. Is that a texture? The one you're holding? Yes. Yes, you can. So did you see how I applied strokes with the blue texture here and there? You can mm -hmm. just apply like that. And then if you have a brush somewhere in the house, you can do this later on. Otherwise, you can just work with the texture. That's totally fine. All right. So that's about it. And now my brush has just um, like a little bit of blue. What I'll do is I'll use that blue and go over those very, you know, narrow areas and crisp corners that I couldn't go over with the thick part of the brush. So I'll just use the corner tip of my flat brush and go over those areas. I don't want too much color because when I'm going over those areas, I will be going um, inside the lines of the fishes or the plants. So I don't want too much color in it because you will be coloring those with a different color. You don't want the same color. Excuse me. Yes. What happens when you finish coloring your um, fish bowl? Finish coloring the fish bowl as in coloring what I'm doing now or coloring everything? Coloring everything. What happens to the fish bowl? Well, you... Uh, uh, that's I, okay. You can you can just wait for Madabani and then you can move on to the next step. <laughs> yes, I think that's the right answer. <laughs> okay, um, so that's how it looks. Looks like um, a watercolor, and I think this is just a cool, fun thing that you can do if you don't have watercolor and if you just have textures in the house. So that's how it looks. Now we'll just allow a, a few seconds for it to dry. Um, as you have seen, I have also colored the rocks here, okay? If you uh, have seen a fishbowl before, you'll see the rocks because they are inside the water, they will be a little bluey, yeah? But I haven't colored this um, sand bed. So I will color the sand bed later on. Sand is yellowish, brownish. They absorb less of the blue tone, but the rocks, which are usually white, um, they absorb more of the bluey shade of the water. So that's why I've colored those sections. Okay. Just forgot a patch here, so I just added some there. Now, let's see. This section has dried. Yeah, looks like it. Okay, looks like it has dried. Um, let's start coloring the fish. Now I will be using. These fishes are orangish, reddish in color. So I will start um, with a red Sharpie. If you don't have a red Sharpie, you can also use a red marker or an orange marker. So first tracing the fish. 
over the pencil line and then I will apply color. The reason why I'm using a Sharpie for tracing is because it's a permanent marker, gives us a deep crisp line. And if you are using this technique that I showed you to wash away the color with water, and then if at any point of time on your drawing sheet, if there is a wet area and you go over with your texture, then it will bleed. So that's why I'm using a Sharpie because Sharpies don't bleed. I'll do the other fish. This is the easy bit for all of you. Just trace your pencil drawing. And I'll use a black Sharpie to do the eyes. You can use a black texture, like I said. Okay. Now we'll do some coloring. I'll show you the colors that I'm picking in a moment. Okay, so I have, um, I'm using yellow and orange. I'll be using these two colors. And I might use a bit of red here and there, but we'll do, we'll, we'll do that later on. But first we will use these light shades before we apply the red. Okay. I will add the orange to the edge of the fish body, to the corners as well to the tip of the mouth as well, okay? So this is how you do it. As you can see, I'm leaving some patches in between the application of orange. Going around the eyes, just like that. And I also will apply color to the fins. Applying color to the tail. And I'm leaving some white spaces towards the tip of the tail. Okay, that's it. And now I will apply the yellow. Okay. 
this I left a little bit of white space around the uh, the gill of the fish, you know, the gills and those round things just behind the head uh, where they kind of breathe through. So I'm not coloring that just because I wanted to highlight that flap. So the gill of the fish is like a flap. It goes up and down as they breathe. So that's how the fish looks. I'll do that for the second one as well. Same technique. Adding more orange towards the edge of the fish body. And as I'm going towards the belly part, I'm adding some strokes, just like that. Okay. Doing the same technique for the fins that we did for the other fish. And as I'm going towards the tip of the tail, I'm leaving a bit of white so I can fill it up with the yellow. Back to yellow. Coloring all the white spaces other than the gills. Okay, now I'll take, um, let's see, I'll take some green, maybe dark green. Once again, I'm using a dark green Sharpie. Um, you can also use a dark green texture. And I'll trace Uh, these plants. Okay. Okay, now I'll take this uh, dark green color and I'll just color over it. Um, once again, I'll leave some patches of white and I'll fill those patches with some other color, but I'll start with the green first.
Okay. And in those um, white patches, I will just apply some light green. That's it. Let's draw these small, teeny tiny fishes here. Um, and I will be using a different color for those. Maybe let's use purple. Haven't used purple. So I'm using a purple Sharpie. to trace the fish body. And then I'll fill it up with purple color. Just filling it up with purple color, the body and the tail. And for the head, I will add um, a little bit of yellow. And once I've added the yellow, I'll take my Sharpie and I'll just add a few dots to the head. I don't know how well you can see the dots. They're tiny. They're really, really tiny. You can just do the dots yourself to give it a mottled look. Okay. Um, I will take my black Sharpie and make these um, little pebbles. Just tracing those pebbles. And I'm not pressing my Sharpie too much on the sheet of paper because I don't want bold lines. All the features that you're drawing right now, they're all um, under the water. So you, you can't see defined lines under the water. There will be ripples. So they all will be wobbly and diffused. Okay, now uh, the sand bed. I'm just taking a brown and for the sand bed I'm basically just adding some random dots and dashes like that with the brown. And I'll also add uh, a little bit of yellow. So I have a sandy yellow color. If you don't have a sandy yellow color, you can uh, just use the usual yellow that you have.
So that's it. And then we have these snake-like uh, plants inside the water. So I will be using uh, my green Sharpie once again. So this is a dark green Sharpie that I'm using and I will trace the plants first. And I'm thickening uh, some areas of these snake-like plants. Uh, by that I mean, while well, I'm tracing the areas that are bulged out, I am adding a few more lines there to make uh, to make the line thicker. Gives gives it a bit of shadow and makes it look like um, it's kind of wobbly and flowy inside the water. Okay. All right. Now I will take, let's see. Uh, so used this Sharpie. Now, okay. Now I'm using um, this dark another dark green so I was using this blue green and now I'm using a light green I don't know how much you can see the difference um, but yeah, I use the blue green to do the tracing and I'm using a usual dark green um, to color it now when I'm doing coloring I'm adding some lines instead of just coloring over it. And I'm adding the lines towards the tip and then I will color the rest. It's just creating some detailing in those plants. So just like that. And then I'll take the usual light green and go over it. Okay, that finishes plants. Now, I missed this pin, so I'll just quickly color that pin. With orange and yellow. Okay, as a last step, well, one of the last steps, I will take a black Sharpie and I will trace the fish bowl. Just freehand, it's okay. If it's a little wobbly.
Okay, let me make this line a little thick. Okay, and then the tabletop. Now for the tabletop, um, if you want to create something here, if you want to add maybe, I don't know, some, some bowls or maybe a jar of fish food, you can add it here if you like. Um, yeah, you can be creative as many ways as possible. I will quickly just finish off um, with the fishes. I've taken this red marker and I'm creating some fish scales. I won't be creating fish scales all over the body. Just some here and there. And some scales for this one. And adding a few lines on the fins. Gives it a nice detailing. Okay. And that completes our fishbowl with fox watercolor.